We are the anchors of Queer News Tonight, and this evening we discuss the queer headlines. Biden-Harris campaign launches Out for Biden-Harris to rally LGBTQ plus support, emphasizing community significance and past electoral influence. The Vatican's Dignitas Infinita outlines human dignity issues, including LGBTQ plus rights. It calls for worldwide opposition to anti-LGBTQ plus laws. This declaration contradicts itself on trans and surrogacy. Federal judge orders Florida to respect transgender teachers' pronouns, granting a preliminary injunction in lawsuit against HB 1069. How come? A violation of free speech. Outkick discusses Caitlin Clark's rising fame and suggests leveraging her celebrity while noting she might be facing reverse discrimination because she's white and straight. A Twitter post discusses how LGBTQ plus spaces struggle as the cis hetero population starts crowding them. The post raises the question if we should keep gay bars gay. Hmm. Good evening and welcome to Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only LGBTQ plus daily evening television news. We're broadcasting live and available on demand. Available on all your smart televisions, including Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. It's time to queer up the news for Thursday, April 11th, 2024. We are live and literally out of the closet and into the headlines. So many of your important stories we're going to tell this evening on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only unedited live LGBTQ plus evening news show. Whatever happens unique in LGBTQ plus news, you will see it and hear it. Hotspots Magazine, Happening Out Television Network, is a non-profit 501c free media company in the same model of PBS and NPR, but designed for the LGBTQ plus community. Our mission is to support the 11 pillars of our LGBTQ plus community. We want to inform and educate the key issues of our queer culture, the black community, Latino, lesbians and queer women, trans, students and youth, seniors, HIV and AIDS healthcare, business, social justice, and faith. Help us support our community. We are part of one of the largest LGBTQ plus nonprofit media companies in America, Hotspots Magazine and Happening Out Television Network. In 2024, our magazine is celebrating 40 years of the LGBTQ plus experience and our television news, talk, and entertainment shows support our mission to educate the LGBTQ plus and broader community. We'll begin tonight by meeting this great group of anchors. Let's welcome anchor Bad Poppy. Bad Poppy is a Latin gender fluid drag artist who redefines what it means to be trans and non-binary in the Latin community. Bad Poppy is also the executive director of Reflect Collect Collective, a nonprofit that serves QTPOC survivors of sexual and domestic violence. Bad Poppy Gender Blender is coming to celebrate its seventh anniversary at Gramps uh, on April 28th. What's this all about? I'm excited. Yeah, so Gender Blender is basically a queer alternative uh, show. It's going to be super fun. Uh, so as you said, uh, you're, we're celebrating a seventh anniversary. I'm going to be performing not this one, but the next one coming up on May 18th. But this one is going to have a great lineup of drag performers such as Carla Croqueta, my favorite. I love you, Carla. So it's going to be really fun. Come, to, come on down, see us perform and uh, have fun. That's fantastic. Sounds great. Next, we'll welcome anchor Dr. Bobby Huon. Sorry, Bobby. He's a certified civil and family mediator and founder of BH Conflict Resolution Services. From Hong Kong and having grown up across the world, he can offer a queer global perspective on current events. Bobby, uh, Matthew Darren and his D-Rock Productions will be bringing Pride Fantasia to the manor on June 12th. What can we expect out of Matthew this time? Well, Matthew, who has been an anchor here before, uh, is uh, putting a show that includes performance and art exhibits on June 12th to celebrate Pride, which is because June 12th is around the time that we, the Stonewall Pride is happening, although I don't remember the exact date. Uh, 
And this will take place in manner in the heart of Wilton Manors and it will benefit SunSurf and youth and LGBTQ plus youth. So it will be a fantastic way to give money while enjoying some artistic performances. That's great. Matthew's always a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I look forward to that as well. Next, let's welcome anchor Jamal L. Starks, aka Porcelain. Jamal is currently the president of Impulse Group Miami. He's a sexual wellness advocate and coach and walks sex siren in the ballroom scene with the house of gorgeous Gucci. Jamal is a board member of the Legacy Builders Consultant Group, a part of South Florida's Fit Safe Space team and the Queer Yoga Club at Miami Life Center. Jamal Kiss Me Kosher will be screened at Saver Cinema on April 12th as a part of Fort Lauderdale Film Festival. Tell me what uh, what's up with Kiss Me Kosher? Well, if the people aren't wrapped up in Miami Pride too much, you can go to the Saver Cinema, which is around the corner from where we are right now on 6th Street for the Fort Lauderdale International Film Festival. The show starts at 6 p.m. and you can get your tickets at FLIFF.com. Excellent. Let's welcome anchor Greg Shapiro. Greg's ninth book, Refrain in Light, was selected for the Poetry Mutual 10 Best Poetry Books of 2023. His entertainment coverage, including celebrity interviews, run in a variety of print and online publications. Greg, our LGBTQ plus theater home of The Parker, is bringing Cabanero Lies on Stage on May 17th. What's this all about? Well, Michael Cabanero, who's on my chest right here, and also in my hand. Uh, he's a gay actor, illusionist, and notorious prankster. Uh, he, people may recognize him from his hilarious hidden camera series, The Carbonaro Effect, as well as portrayal, his portrayal of Andy in 2006's Another Gay Movie. He returns to South Florida with his highly entertaining show, Carbonaro Lies on Stage, in which he, which he even makes skeptics like me kind of believe in magic. So check him out. After the show, you're going to have to tell me more about uh, him being on your chest. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this is tonight's lead anchor, Dr. Ty Hauser. He is a professor of English and Humanities at Broward College and teaches in the College of Business at Florida Atlantic University. He has served as visiting professor at colleges in Bolivia, Brazil, China, India, and Spain, and provides an international viewpoint well-traveled Ty, the beloved Empire Stage Theater, will be bringing Falsettos April 26th to May 19th. Tell me what's happening. Falsettos is a great musical, if you haven't seen it. It's by William Finn and James Lapine. Uh, it's directed by uh, Michael Ursua. And uh, it's usually described as a hilarious, heartbreaking, and utterly unique musical. It's a contemporary uh, show about a gay man named Marvin and his lover, Wizard, Marvin's wife, Trina and their extended family from the early 80s through the early days of the AIDS crisis. Uh, again, it's running from the 26th to May 19th at the Empire Stage. Tickets are $40. And if you haven't seen it, you need to see it because it is a mm. fantastic musical. I really, really enjoy it. And uh, I, I may or may not know a couple of people in the cast. Oh, <laughs> VIP. Okay. So we are the reporters for Queer News tonight. And this evening, we begin with the queer headlines. The LGBTQ plus community in South Florida and across America is diverse. Our community across the world is vast. And here are the bullet points of the queer news for Thursday, April 11th, 2024. We'll begin the news by queering up politics. Joe Biden launches Out for Biden Harris campaign to win LGBTQ plus votes in November. Yesterday, the Biden Harris campaign unveiled a targeted initiative aimed at energizing support from the LGBTQ plus community for President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris's reelection bid in 2024. Characterizing the current administration as the most supportive of LGBTQ plus rights in history, the new initiative called Out for Biden Harris underscores the campaign's dedication to the LGBTQ plus community and recognizes its significance in previous electoral successes. Campaign manager Julie Chavez Rodriguez emphasized the pivotal role of the LGBTQ plus community in securing electoral victories in an, ex in an exclusive interview with The Advocate. She said, quote, LGBTQ plus voters are a force to be reckoned with. 
and that we are. The campaign reports that the 2020 election witnessed the mobilization of almost 11,000 LGBTQ plus volunteers whose contributions were instrumental in securing the victory for Biden and Harris. In order to leverage this strong support network, the Out for Biden Harris initiative aims to re-engage these supporters and amplify their influential efforts. The campaign aims to draw on community advocates like drag performers, elected representatives, and LGBTQ plus religious leaders. The campaign video shows the vice president who recently celebrated 20 years since performing same-sex marriages in California, invoking Harvey Milk's legacy. She says, quote, rights are won only by those who make their voices heard. And because of you making your voices heard, marriages are more secure, end quote. This campaign shows the importance of our voice and how it holds this election in its hands. Even Trump is trying to win LGBTQ plus voters by announcing his wife's presence at the upcoming Log Cabin Republicans fundraiser. We are so excited to launch Out for Biden Harris. As the great Harvey Milk once said, rights are won only by those who make their voices heard. You made your voices heard. Marriages are more secure. And Joe Biden is our president. A president who elevated LGBTQI plus leaders to every level of our administration, who fights for the safety and freedom and dignity of all people every single day. We believe LGBTQ plus rights are human rights. We will do what we have always done in this movement, in this community, which is collectively, we will continue to build unity. We will continue to build coalition. We will always be fueled by knowing we have so much more in common than what separates us. We will be fueled by knowing we are all in this together. What do you say? Please text OUT to 30330 to join us. So what I love about this is it really does a good job of reminding me about everything that the Biden-Harris administration yeah. has done. Uh, I didn't... I didn't put it all together until I saw it in front of me. And I really like, uh, I really like that as the promotional piece here. You know, I'm a, I'm a hand wringing, what if kind of person, although I try not to be. And the story makes me wonder what if this kind of outreach to the LGBTQ community doesn't help the way it might have in the past with this reelection? Does that mean that our votes in the future, that LGBTQ plus voters, we won't, will kind of be overlooked as a voting block? Just, it feels like a lot of pressure. And I don't do well under pressure. So <laughs> so you guys, it's up to you. It's up to all of you. If you need me to take you to the polls, Thank I will. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's uh, I th I think it's fantastic that actually the Biden Harris campaign recognize the population and not take us gra for granted. I mean, let's face it, most most if you f swing a poll in Wilton Manors, you know, you'll hit nine liberals before you hit a conservative that would not admit that he is conservative. So, they, so for me, the the fact that they're not taking us for granted, although we are overwhelmingly democratic say a lot about acknowledging our community's power yeah so what do you guys think and maybe um jamal and bad papa you might have a, a different perspective on this what do you think about the fact that this is kamala mostly in this ad and very little of actual <laughs> <laughs> i don't know jamal you go first <laughs> <laughs> i don't mean to put you on the spot I didn't have the no 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 oh. no no that's fine um i you want to get into my secret thoughts <laughs> And it's a little bit pandering. Um, oh. As far as d uh, Democratic and Republican, I see that uh, Trump is pandering now with his wife going to the log camp. And, and we reported on this on Monday. Mm -hmm. And I was here when we reported on it. And I was like, this wasn't Trump's first time even <laughs> pandering to the LGBTQ plus community, which he calls the gays. Um, and here we have not seen Kamala in I don't know since we did it, Joe. <laughs> now we hear her talking about Harvey Milk and all of the great things that the Biden Harris administration <laughs> has done. And so for me, it just it just really falls flat because I feel as though you could have done more from the beginning from maybe last year from maybe two years ago we just mm -hmm. went through a pandemic hello from, from uh, we're still recovering and 
um, with all of the the laws, this is last year was what the most anti LGBTQ plus laws. We didn't see this much activity from them, but mm -hmm. now they want our votes. Exactly. Now you want our vote. And I'm, 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 uh, I, I lean very democratic since that's my, my voting history. But in my personal life, I lean towards whatever is, uh, in front of me that speaks to the morale <laughs> or keeping the morale mm. of the country. Mm. And honey, I'm, mm. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I mean, I'm gonna vote for him, but <laughs> I'm, 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 is... I'm not going to lie. Like I honestly ha share the same sentiments, especially because like there's so many anti-trans laws like out there in the country. And like, I was fearing for my life for a good, me and my friends were fearing for our lives for a very good hot minute and not much was done in the White House to really protect our lives. So I, it, it's like a disillusionment that you feel like seeing them like use you for your their political campaign, but not really care about your lives when you need it the most. You on, know? The, on the other hand, I just want to put a counterpoint out there that uh, the Biden-Harris campaign or by extension of federal government from the White House down has very little to do to say about the state government policies. Mm -hmm. and. In the lower federal courts, Donald Trump has packed it with so many yeah, Republican right. appointees that are Federalist Society and Heritage, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, right, so their hands were tied. That's, yeah. they, that's the first layer of courts are going to reject LGBTQ mm -hmm. plus rights. And with a 6 3 super conservative majority, there's, for, there's uh, very little in the judicial system for, to benefit <laughs> us either. I mean, some of some cases surprises us. For example, the Bostock case, which is about LGBTQ plus, especially trans employment discrimination. On the and I can understand why. I mean, I'm not a Biden Harris apologist, but I understand why Kamala was was doing this part because Kamala was California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's from California. Mm -hmm. and therefore, and she performed the, yeah, uh, marriages. Right. Yeah, we but, get, we get it. I get, I get the illusion. I get it. But also, what was it to take to put together this TikTok? Come on, we all do TikToks and content creating. It took nothing for them to do this for some votes. So it could have taken nothing for them just to speak out and say trans rights or human rights or something like that. And a cute TikTok like this? <laughs> like, what? come on now. Like, this was what, a 97, tick, 90 second TikTok? Yeah, it, I it do doesn't TikToks. Take I, I can attest that it's <laughs> Even a if you're not uh, speaking you outright against state rights or anything, just the basic decency of human rights when you know what's going on in the country right. through a TikTok. Right. Like, you're doing a TikTok campaign for, like, y'all planning on well, it. Well, they, we've, they're they're, they're still gonna have to find another platform because TikTok's about <laughs> yeah, to be banned, remember? Right. Like, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta figure that out. But it's also a <laughs> <laughs> cute, it's a, it, it's also a cute way of um, of them showing the solidarity, the, yeah, solidarity yeah. with TikTok and the importance of the yeah, TikTok absolutely. platform. And mm -hmm. we could have been doing this for months and yeah. years now, yeah. but yet now here we come up to the election. Well, you need our votes. You need my vote. <laughs> So I'll just say that I don't do TikTok. I only do OnlyFans, and it's a lot more complicated. <laughs> it's a lot more complicated than you think it is. Oh no! <laughs> Bobby, take us on from that. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, from OnlyFans now to religion. Next, let's queer up religion. Vatican takes on LGBTQ plus laws, creates contradictions. The Vatican released a new document this week called Dignitas Infinita which was approved by Pope Francis. This 20-page declaration, crafted over five years, covers various topics related to what the Vatican defines as human dignity issues. These include poverty, the plight of migrants, violence against women, human trafficking, war, abortion, in vitro fertilization, surrogacy, the death penalty, and gender reassignment surgery. Once more, the document presents conf conflicting views on LGBTQ plus individuals and their relationship with the church. While acknowledging the dignity of queer and trans people, it also expresses disapproval of practices such as gender transition surgery surrogacy, and in vitro fertilization. These methods are commonly used by gay and lesbian couples to start families. The headline from the new Vatican document is that it condemns laws that discriminate against LGBTQ plus individuals. The document says that se the sex assigned at birth is a, quote, irrevocable gift from God, end quote, and any procedure involving sex changes, change poses a risk to, quote, the unique dignity the person has received from the moment of conscience conception, end quote. The 
document states that individuals who seek self-determination based on gender theory are at risk of falling to the risk of, quote, the age of temptation to make oneself God, end quote. It appears contradictory, considering that as recently as November, Pope Francis extend expanded the church's acceptance of transgender individuals by stating that they can undergo baptism and serve as godparents. The Vatican documents suggest that they will fight anti-LGBTQ plus sentiment even in local Catholic dioceses that were discriminating against the LGBTQ plus community. Once again, this document represents really, I mean, first of all, five years to write 20 pages. <laughs> five years to write 20 pages. Second of all, Dignitas Infinitas sounds like a Harry Potter spell. <laughs> and third, this is very typical of Francis, and uh, the conflict within the larger church itself. So what has happened is uh, John Paul II and Benedict has, mm -hmm. are both very, very conservative. Mm -hmm. Leans extremely conservative, anti-LGBTQ, anti-everything. But Francis have been redirecting the church's energy towards to a social social justice issues like poverty, migrants, you know, I mean, there are things that we will never uh, that uh, there are things that some people are never going to see eye to eye, for example. But on the other hand, most Catholics do anyway. Trust me, <laughs> Catholics go to IVF, the Catholics do surrogacy. And the one thing that I think is more important is that they, uh, you oppose gender transition sur surgery, but you also advocate against discriminatory laws against LGBTQ plus people. So it is, a, it is essentially a compromise document between, uh, the, between a church bureaucracy that is essentially continue to be conservative and church leadership slowly being replaced by Francis that are more accepting of a more liberal agenda. Well, and it's because they've been losing followers for years, it's maybe another way. But I mean, come on, this is just another example of the hypocrisy of the Catholic Church. They can't decide how to deal with LGBTQ plus folks. Meanwhile, how many gay priests and lesbian nuns do we all know? I'm not even Catholic, and My I'm Halloween. friends with quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> All year, all year all round, all year round, yes. <laughs> I, I'm going to say there's nothing about this that surprises me. Um, it's, it's, it follows the same doctrine of hate the sin, love the sinner. Mm -hmm. So love LGBTQ plus people, love the trans person, love the gay person, uh, but it's not good to be that. Mm -hmm. You know what's really funny about it is that they say that, you know, gender is like, you know, irreversible and that it's God's given nature and this and that. But they will 100% support intersex people getting, you know, surgeries and like hormones prescribed to them. I got hormones prescribed to myself when I was like young. I had higher levels of testosterone. The doctors changed my biology. So that's okay. But for trans people, it's not. Mm. 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 Okay. Mm. Mm. Hypocrisy. Yeah. <laughs> like that's that's the name it's of the game very of Christianity. One step forward. It's like one step forward, half step back. It's, I mean, the church has been around for like a zillion years. They always t deliberate like, you know, it will take a century to make a decision. <laughs> this is true. But anyway, next let's uh, queer up education. Florida queer teacher wins First Amendment victory in the classroom. A federal judge made a significant ruling mandating that Florida education authorities permit a transgender teacher, Katie Wood, to use she, her pronouns while at school. This decision comes following a lawsuit filed by Wood alongside a non-binary teacher named A.B. Schwains last year. The lawsuit challenged the validity of Florida's HB 1069, a law enacted by Republican Governor Ron DeSantis, which prohibits public K-12 through education staff from using a student's preferred personal pronouns if they don't align with the student's sex. Violations of this law carry severe penalties, including termination and potential suspension or revocation of teaching certificate after HB 1069 became law. Wood, who teaches math at Leonard High School in East Tampa and had already changed her name and gender on official documents, was told by the principal that she couldn't call herself Miss anymore. Schwanz, who worked at Florida Virtual School teaching physics, got fired in October after they told people they're non-binary and chose not to use gendered words like he or she. 
The two teachers took legal action against state officials, including the Florida Department of Education. They claimed that HB 1069 goes against the Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, Title IX, and the First and Fourteenth Amendments of the U.S. Constitution. They requested an injunction to stop the law's enforcement, as well as a preliminary injunction. On Tuesday, Judge Mark Walker approved Wood's request for a preliminary injunction on the grounds it violated Walker's free speech. There's a lot to say with this one because um, I actually have friends who are currently in the education system. They are teachers. Uh, they don't have um, binary pronouns. <laughs> they go by they, them, and they have wow. to literally hide themselves in order to not face firing, in order to not face job insecurity. And it's the scariest thing to literally be in a job and constantly feel like you could lose it at any moment if somebody were to <laughs> out you. And not only that, but um, they can use pronouns. They can use pronouns. I've seen them use pronouns. They can use they, them. Whenever somebody leaves a pen on the table, you don't know who it is. They'd be like, somebody left their pen. They use they, they them pronouns. Absolutely no problem. But when it comes to yeah. somebody's gender, mm -hmm. that's when they don't do it. Mm. And it's, it's the most ridiculous thing because it, like, it's basic English, people. Basic mm. English. We learned this in elementary school. Do better. Anyway, I mean... Their tactic has always been, let's gin up something and scare the living crap out of people. You know, now, they have, uh, for example, there's recently another mass shooting. And, of course, lips of TikTok immediately claimed that the shooter is trans mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it was to incite disgust. It was to incite alien, the, the alienness, you know, alienation of the other is the whole point here. Mm -hmm. That. Well, as if it isn't stressful enough teaching where there are shootings on a regular basis mm -hmm. or the fact that teachers are not paid well at all. No. Mm -hmm. So all of this, just to add this other layer to it, it's got to be, I mean, how do we even stand in front of a classroom and smile at these children, you know? Like, can we bring up a picture of Katie again? Because I want to tip my hat off to Katie, okay? She was the one to get up and actually do something mm -hmm. about what was going on mm -hmm. in our school system last year. And you're going to tell me that the students won't be confused not being able to call this lady miss? <laughs> Come on now, look at Katie. <laughs> Katie, go off, okay? I want to I want to really, really, all heroes don't wear capes, and this yeah. is a story about that. These are the heroes. These are the actions. These are the things we need to be seeing being done in our community mm -hmm. just by regular people. You have power. Like, come on, Katie. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm really glad you said that. There are a couple things I want to highlight about this. Um, the judge in his in his uh, ruling really smacked down Florida. He wrote, once again, the state of Florida has a First Amendment problem. Mm. It has occurred so frequently of late, some might say you can set your clock by it. So, I mean, clearly the judge is sick <laughs> of what's going on in Florida. Yeah, right. But also in this ruling, the judge gives us a nod to LGBTQ+. He writes, ours is a union of individuals celebrating ourselves and singing ourselves, being ourselves without apology. Walt Whitman, well, Whitman yep. gay sure. LGBTQ sure. plus poet writes, I celebrate myself and I sing myself mm -hmm. and what I assume you shall assume for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. Song of so myself. Yes. this judge, I think, did a fantastic job sure. of giving Florida a smackdown and then in his opinion, uh, incorporating one of our own uh, dead poets. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. Next, let's queer up sports. Basketball talk star Caitlin Clark is a victim of reverse discrimination. Really? In a recent segment on Outkick the Show with Clay Travis, the discussion centered around the WNBA and its rising star player, Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. Travis delved into Clark's impact on women's college basketball and likening her influence to that of legendary athletes in their respective sports such as Ronda Rousey in UFC and Tiger Woods in golf. Travis emphasized the unprecedented nature of Clark's celebrity, asserting that she commands more attention than the entirety of women's college basketball itself. Furthermore, 
Travis proposed strategic avenues for leveraging Clark's celebrity, including her participation in high-profile events in the U.S. women's basketball team. He argued such moves could not only enhance her personal brand, but also elevate viewership and interest in women's basketball at large. He then discussed a disturbing trend of anti caitlin social media rejection. He raised concerns regarding what he termed reverse discrimination directed at Clark. He suggested that Clark's identity as a straight, white athlete might be perceived unfavorably within the women's basketball community, which he suggested is predominantly comprised of minorities and lesbians. Travis implied that this discomfort with Clark's demographic profile could potentially hinder her reception in both women's college basketball and the WNBA. It's unclear whether this observation is grounded in reality or stems from a sense of paranoia. But as Caitlin Clark continues to make waves in the basketball world, the conversation around her influence and the dynamics of diversity and inclusion in sports is sure to persist. So my one question to this Travis guy is, where did he get his data? And is it actually factual? Like, this seems like some biased ass opinion that women's basketball is comprised of mainly, uh, mainly minorities and lesbians. Like, where do we get these figures? So he didn't offer any figures in his, no. in his, he just, he just talked about no, it no, as no, if right it now. was fact. So it was stemming from paranoia. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and, uh, <laughs> and homophobia, you know, clay pigeon Travis, it's just a Trumper mouthpiece yeah. who has nothing better to do than be a shit stirrer. Boo sports ball casters. Yeah. So Media Matters has a whole catalog of misogynistic and uh, 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 chauvinist attacks that he's had on all uh, WNBA, including, um, what's her name, Caitlin? Uh, they just have a list of everything that he said during the final four playoffs. So what, well, like you can't have both. You can't like go off on them, uh, go off on her for. So I want to touch on a very important piece of this um, kind of segment, because I feel like for a lot of viewers out there, I feel like maybe some of y'all don't know why reverse racism and reverse, you know, transphobia and all that can't exist, but I'm going to explain it to y'all very, very small terms. So, let's think of like an individual basis right where we have um like a partner an intimate partner violence abuse right there's a partner who's very abusive to their other partner right and um that partner in order to elicit abuse with that other partner has to have more power than the other partner right that's the only time that you can have abuse if it's if it's mutual then there's no it's not abuse right so if one p partner has more power than the other and um, that other partner fights back and that other partner is basically like defending themselves, it's called self-defense. It's not called mutual abuse. It's not called, you know, reverse abuse. Right. But now we're thinking about this from a systemic level. Right. Racism is systemic. Transphobia is systemic. Mm -hmm. Homophobia is systemic. This is a, a, a systemic issue. Right. And it, it's 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 very similar, except here. The abusive partner and the abusive people are the people in power, right? White, cis, hetero, um, sexual, like people, right? They're the ones eliciting the abuse towards people who are, who are people of color, who are trans, who, who are gay, right? And that's why there is no such thing as reverse racism because they're literally, it's, it's, it's quite literally under this, um, rule like self-defense. And that's why saying reverse racism and, and claiming those things is, a problem it's 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 inaccurate and it's a system we have to remember it's a system um and and i know that some of y'all may <laughs> might still not understand that but like you know just read up um educate yourselves and um you know be be mindful to people who might not share your same identities <laughs> people who people who use reverse uh, discrimination come from a certain iq level <laughs> 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 That does yeah. not um, extend to uh, having a certain conversation where that would even mm -hmm. fly over with them or they'll accept it. Mm -hmm. Reverse racism that or reverse discrimination is used as this ploy. It's, 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 it's the gag.
gaslighting ploy. Mm, kind of that's, like, that's, that's, ah, that's ah, the word. Right. Child, please. Like, yeah. you haven't experienced it. I have. I'm, it's reverse discrimination. So I don't even engage in these types of conversations. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I choose not to educate mm-hmm. anyone who... Uh, <laughs> Because you, you you're showing that. me, yeah, you're showing me where you are, and so I'm going to meet you where you are and leave you where you are. Like that, that, that's that's as far as the conversation is right. going to go. Right. Um, so people like travel is the jail. I always ask like these people who are complaining about you know, reverse discrimination. Show me a case. Show me a case of reverse discrimination. <laughs> you actually need to have a case in order to do so. This reverse discriminations are like so many conservative buzzwords are created mm-hmm. by. Fox News and conservative mm-hmm. organization as a boogeyman, you know, to <laughs> like, like, oh my <laughs> God, to, to tell their majority, their majority white, cis, hetero, you know, uh, religious uh, audience that, you know, they are the victim. They mm. want to, they want to be the victim <laughs> so, bad. so bad. And then they get mad when we say that like something happens to us. Like, yeah. okay, right. whatever. But, you know, I find it like really, like it's just so funny to me when somebody like tells me, you're being heterophobic. You're being heterophobic. You're being cis phobic. Like, um, <laughs> ma'am, <laughs> sit down. Like, <laughs> I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you, darn kid. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Next, let's grow up gay culture. It's 1994. I mean, 2024. Do we still want to keep gay bars gay? It's a prevalent issue these days. Spaces originally intended for queer individuals celebrated for their inclusivity and vibrant atmosphere often find themselves inundated with cisgender heterosexual attendees. Gay bars historically since the 1969 Stonewall riots were a place of safety for the LGBTQ plus community. A viral post on Twitter shared by a user talked about a recurring pattern the user has observed. The post mentions the evolution of LGBTQ spaces. First, queer individuals create their own spaces. Then, these spaces gain popularity. Then, straight, cisgender women begin attending for a sense of safety and enjoyment. Following them come straight, cisgender men to pursue women. As a result, many posters said the LGBTQ community feels displaced and unsafe in these spaces. And then the LGBTQ individuals stop frequenting or lose ownership of the space. Danny also clarifies that he welcomes, quote, allies who are respectful of our spaces, end quote, and the criticism is directed at those who are not. Needless to say, many commented on the post, sharing their suggestion on how we can keep the gay bars gay. Some suggested making the place nerdier. Some suggested running gay porn to keep straight people at a distance. And one person said, quote, this is where leather kink spaces, queer spaces have succeeded. We are so unapologetically our queer selves that it's harder for straight people to really enjoy, end quote. Though all these suggestions are entertaining, the issue being discussed is felt deeply by many community members. One question that arises is, do we still want to keep gay bars gay in 2024? Well, I'm actually very grateful that I got to do this story because a couple weeks ago I was in New Orleans at a literary festival where I moderated a panel on a series of recently published, more show and tell here, recently published books on the subject. So there's Gregor Matson's Who, Need Gay- Who Needs Gay Bars, there's Lucas Hildebrand's The Bars Are Ours, there's even the wonderful Krista Burton's book, uh, Moby Dyke, which is about when she traveled across the country seeing the last of remaining lesbian bars. And then my, my own darn husband wrote a book about the history of gay bars in Chicago, and his new book, which will be about the history of gay bars in South Florida, is coming out later this year. So the point of that is that all of a sudden there is this crazy interest in the gay bars. There's books being written, there's a documentary about the last of the remaining women's bars. So it's in the zeitgeist, people are very much aware of it. Um, You know, so the thing is, like this person said, 
as long as the patrons are respectful of the space, then I think that it's okay. But more than anything, to answer that question, who needs gay bars? I would say read these books. They're full of really interesting stories and information. And I think everybody else has something. I feel like every time you come here, you always bring these book suggestions. And I, I just add to the list, like it keeps piling on. It's the, like... of <laughs> <laughs> it's the journalist in me. But yes, but I, I think it's an important subject. I think our bars are a very important subject. Yeah, we need, we need queer space. We still do because the rest of the world is gentrifying everything mm -hmm. uh, around us. I mean, gay neighborhoods are dying. Gay bars are dying. They're being replaced by there's a sort of that six steps of of uh, expelling LGBTQ plus space that literally took place over the last thirty years in South Beach. Mm. In the nineties, oh, right. it was yeah, and right. in the nineties, it was gay, 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 gay. Saatchi lives there. It was male models. You know, Abercrombie and Fitch. It was everything is gay, mm. and then. Had to, uh, then, then it becomes cool. The minute that MTV hold their VMAs there, it becomes super cool. The bar owners there realize that instead of selling, you know, vodka cran to the queers, they can just sell mm -hmm. bottles of sh bottle service to, uh, you know, to unsuspecting heteros for, you know, five hundred dollars a pop for a <laughs> bottle of Absolute, <laughs> and then the, eventually the price of uh, the pr the rent goes up. They get, you know, queer spaces got expelled. And right. now Miami Beach has, I mean, they still have palace. They still have a twist, but otherwise it's that zone for, uh, for queer people. It's not a queer space anymore. But that's the history of gay neighborhoods. Gay, right. gay people move into really crappy rundown neighborhoods. Yeah. They gentrify it. They fix it up and then straight people move in and they can no Destroy longer it. afford to. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I'm actually kind of curious though. Like, how do they know? who is or isn't queer, because sometimes I feel like you can't really tell just by looking at someone. Like, for example, if someone were to look at, like, me and my girlfriend, like, they'd be like, oh, that's like a heterosexual couple, and they wouldn't even blink twice about it. But we're queer. We're absolutely queer. Um, but, like, how, how how do we know who is or isn't queer? Is it the way that they present themselves? Are you talking about in the bars? Yeah, with, the with, within the bars. I think that because the idea that women were going there initially because they felt safe, they weren't being hit on all the time. And when a man shows up in a bar and he's not a gay bar and he's not hitting on other gay men, I see. but he's hitting on straight well, women, I think that's the indication. And I think that's the important reason for having queer space because you can assume that you're surrounded yeah. by queer yeah. people. Yeah. That's yeah. the safe Cause, space. Cause, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Th that's the thing. And I guess, like, um, I just also don't want to erase, like, bisexual people, like, in the space either, because, you know, th they could be straight women, but they could also be bisexual women entering that space, mm -hmm. looking maybe for another partner there. I think also this is the uh, proper moment to um, highlight the need for intentional spaces yes. and also the need to own the building oh, yes, and exactly. own exactly. the real estate Absolutely. that we occupy. Mm -hmm. it, is, it, is, it, it, is, it is not lost on many of us in the community that we've watched many spaces mm -hmm. where we frequented that and then only for them to leave and then us to learn that we didn't even own that mm -hmm. space. We yeah. didn't even own that building. Yeah. And and these are the problems that uh, that that come up in the community. Um, and it's also connected to housing. You know, it's mm -hmm. connected to all of these different um, intersections and avenues that we deal with on the daily as queer people. Mm -hmm. And we just need to expand more yeah. and become more intentional about our spaces. Absolutely. And also and more intentional about owning our spaces, like community land trust and, Absolutely. and things of that nature. Like we really need to expand the conversation outside of just the bar, right. you know, yeah. drinking. And I, I, I get why, yeah. where it came from, you know, that's where our rights and things were fought for and where we started off. We're meeting now, well, right now. We're, we're moving past that right. era. We're moving into a new society, a new right. era. We need to really expand this conversation. But well, that's what happened yeah. in Chicago on North Halstead, which is the gay strip, uh, was that the bar owners bought 
the building. Yeah. That was the yeah. difference. It was no yeah. longer, they were no longer paying rent to straight yeah. owners. They, just they were buying the businesses. Yeah. And yeah. that's a big deal. Absolutely. And and I also feel like it's important to also establish certain boundaries within these spaces too. Because e even within these spaces, like we still have transphobia ha happening. We mm -hmm. still have like right. a lot of racism sure. happening. We, we yeah. need to establish boundaries and be like, hey, like XYZ is not okay. And if you do this in our establishment, you're out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know? I, th I, th I think it's important to know that there's also a slight bit of over the panic in the like it's gay are gay bars di disappearing there are yes there's some are but there's also some opening too there's actually yeah, a new one in winwood opening I, I i think this is speaking more outside of our bubble because we live in a south floridian yeah, right, bubble right. i think this is speaking more towards um like the the i think we reported on this months ago where the only lesbian bar is shutting down in texas right? yes um yes. and then other places where they don't see many queer people and the only gathering hole is this water hole <laughs> yeah and now people are flooding in because now it's cool to be right. gay now or they're trying to see what the media portrays of us or they're, they're trying to get that experience mm -hmm. and so they're flooding these places in these rural places that we usually I mean we see these it's our own you know right. <laughs> yeah you know right. Right. Yeah. Um, other places where they don't have as many um, safe spaces <laughs> to go to or yeah. to frequent one one final point to make on this I really like the observation uh, intentional space I think is absolutely to the point here um, but one of the observation observations made was how uh, cis women come, uh, straight cis women come to feel safe, and then it, we get replaced by straight cis men coming. And what happens? That place starts to suffer from the heteronormative masculine view, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's what chases us away. So yeah. what it is is it's the violent masculine mm -hmm. space yeah. that's been mm -hmm. created absolutely. Uh, that's keeping everyone away, but then still taking over. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Tonight's broadcast is presented by the generous support of Visit Lauderdale, everyone under the sun. Next, we are proud of our special partnership with Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale. Supporting that partnership, we are broadcasting from our permit set here at Sunshine Cathedral at the Happening Out television studios. We broadcast Sunshine Cathedral's Sunday international service at 10.30 a.m. We finish tonight's queer news headlines with a segment we call LGBTQ Plus One Minute News. The LGBTQ Plus One Minute News lets queer up entertainment. Here's the surprising list of celebrities that have LGBTQ Plus parents. 
Families can be of different shapes and sizes, and for some people, it means having LGBTQ plus parents. There are many celebrities who were raised by queer parents. This made some of them strong supporters of the community, while some accepted that being raised in non-traditional families made them what they are today. Here are some stars with LGBTQ plus parents. Kendall and Kylie Jenner who saw her, their father, Caitlin, came out as a trans woman in 2015. Jay-Z's mother proud, publicly came out as a lesbian in 2017. The list also includes many more. Paul Bettany, Dave Bautista, whose mother is lesbian, Ali Sheedy, Robert De Niro, whose father was gay, Jennifer Grey, Jenna Malone, Anne Hesh, and 50 Cent. LGBTQ plus one minute news, let's queer up trans rights. Transgender rights get their big day in court on May 14th. An important Wyoming legal dispute of wide ranging consequences will converge for hearings at the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals in Denver on May 14th. The decision could have dramatic effects across America. The dispute is regarding a transgender woman's sorority members at the w University of Wyoming. Influential anti-transgender activists and organizations have focused on this UW sorority case. Six Kappa Kappa Gamma members at the UW sued the sorority after admitting its first openly transgender woman, Artemis Langford. U.S. District Court D Judge Alan B. Johnson dismissed the case in August 2023. The plaintiffs announced they'd appeal, hiring high-profile attorneys. In October, the appeals court ordered both parties to file briefs. The hearing in May will involve arguments over the lower court's ruling. LGBTQ plus one minute news. Let's queer up South Florida and Florida. Outshine Film Festival Miami Edition, one of America's most important LGBTQ plus cultural events. The Miami edition of Outshine Film Festival is scheduled to run from April 18th to the 28th, with over 50 films from across the globe, including international features, shorts, documentaries, and premieres. The festival promises a diverse cinematic experience. This year, a new edition is the Latin Spotlight, along with a platform designed for emerging filmmakers and complimentary Uber transportation to select screenings. Screenings will be held at Silver Spot Cinema in Miami from April 18th to the 24th and at Regal South Beach from April 25th to the 28th, accompanied by various parties and events throughout Miami. Get ready to immerse yourself in the exciting 26th annual Miami Film Lineup, which is one of America's important and reputed LGBTQ plus events. LGBTQ plus one minute news, let's queer up the USA view. What's happening at the Trevor Project? They are hit with another round of layoffs. Last week, the leading LGBTQ plus youth suicide prevention organization, Trevor Project, reduced its staff by 6%. This follows a previous workforce reduction of 12% last year amid union busting activities and financial mismanagement. According to three anonymous sources who spoke with the Washington Blade, this latest action has further dampened morale among the employees, as many of them have lost confidence in the organization's leadership. Staff members received advance notice of impending workforce reductions earlier this year. Apart from the decision to lay off, the email outlined additional cost-saving measures that, would, that the organization would take such as cutting non-essential hiring and reducing discretionary expenses like travel. LGBTQ plus one minute news, let's queer up sports. U.S. Women's Players Association voices support for LGBTQ plus rights. The U.S. Women's National Team Players Association released a statement backing LGBTQ plus rights amid a controversy involving midfielder Corbin Albert's anti-LGBTQ plus TikTok post. Albert reportedly shared a video from a Christian sermon describing being gay and feeling trans as wrong. Later, she apologized for it. This week's statement by the association did not mention Albert's name directly, but said, quote, the women's soccer community is one of joy, excitement, kindness, and love. We have worked to ensure our community is safe, inclusive, and welcoming to everyone. 
as allies and members of the LGBTQ plus community, those efforts will not stop, end quote. It came just hours before Albert's appearance as a substitute for the national team in the She Believes Cup final against Canada. That is today's news for the LGBTQ plus community on the world's first and only daily LGBTQ plus evening news show. If our community is important to you, share this news with your friends and family. Are you, like most of America, part of our very large television audience watching this live LGBTQ plus news broadcast right now on Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, or Amazon Fire TV? Queer News Tonight is the only live LGBTQ plus digital television show in the world that is out of the closet and into the headlines. We need your support. If our community is to grow, we must tell our stories and bring them to the attention of the broader world. This is the only place in the world that tells these types of LGBTQ plus stories in motion and sound. That is the passion of Hot Spots Magazine, Happening Out Television Network, and Queer News Tonight. I'm your anchor, Ty Hauser, and on behalf of these LGBTQ plus reporters, the anchors of Queer News Tonight, including Bad Poppy, Dr. Bobby Huen, Jamal L. Starks, and Greg Shapiro. We'll see you daily at 8 p.m. And to our LGBTQ plus world, we wish you a very good, good night. night.